We're going to play around with the picker. <laughs> so I'm starting this recording. This is using the project we just finished. Anyway, I just opened it up. I clicked on the picker. And I'm over in the right-hand side over here. And I'm looking at the date picker. The mode is set by date and time. We could just set time. If we set time, and then we have, uh, let's take a look here what's going to happen here. Locale. Oh, look at that. We could set the locale. <laughs> We could actually fix this date and time problem by setting this to United States. Uh, let's see. Ukraine. Maybe the U.S. isn't in here. I don't know. Oh, language. So how about English? No, this is the locale. Anyway, I'm sure there's a way of setting it. Current date or custom current day. Let's, let's, uh, let's put time in here for a second. I'm going to put it on English. Uh, <coughs> don't know. I'm sure we have an option in the United States. Does, should, does the United States show up in there? Okay, maybe I should put it back on the United States. United. Where did you find it? You just scrolled in here? You can find English in brackets. You can find. Oh, English. Hold on. English. United States. Well, let's see what happens though with that, because I don't know. We have, we really didn't set the time zone. Uh, we got some constraints: a minimum date, maximum dates. Got the controls. Alignment. The view. Well, let's see what happens though. We ch we changed it to. Uh, What's this one on now? I just want to see what it looks like. Time. We, ch we changed that to time. There's a way of changing it also to numbers. Ah, so here we have, what did the assignment want you to do? <coughs> numbers? Or oh, countdown. You could use time for the countdown. So if you did this, what would happen actually? It's still got the date. So we just need the time. So it is giving us our time. So for the countdown, um, let's see. So it sounded like Siri. <laughs> we could count down from 4:24. I could put numbers in there, actually. Instead, let's go. Let's go back from the time here, <clears throat> and uh, count down timer. Let's go to countdown timer. So the other one I had on was called time. This was countdown timer, 16 hours. <coughs> this would be a better one. <coughs> so set the countdown timer to. Um, I keep wanting to click. You have to. You have to like set. Um, here you got 22 minutes. <coughs> <coughs> so I have 9:22. So, I guess what uh, I'm trying to show you are the properties on the date picker. For the countdown timer, you're probably not going to want to use the date and the time. You're probably just going to use something like this would work, actually. <coughs> so then you could pull this and then subtract one second from it until it made it to zero. So the user would pull this up and say, well, okay, I don't want any hours and I want... I'm not going to write this code for you, but let's just say five minutes. So you could pull the time here and say, okay, five minutes, and then go, well, actually you could add seconds to this if you wanted to, but um, five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, one minute, zero, ding, timer's up. So at the end of five minutes. So the user would pick five minutes and then would click this button or something, you'd put a button that says start, and then the button label changes to stop, and then at the end of the countdown, it changes the label said countdown or something, or puts up a, an alert box or something. I'll let you figure that out. It's not too hard. Yeah? How what? Oh, when the time is ended, you just check for the time to be zero. You know that other tutorial that I gave you that did the stopwatch? You just do it in the opposite direction. <laughs> but pick it from here. Take this and then go minus one, minus one, minus one second. 
Or you could do it in whole minute increments if you wanted to. But you have to wait for a whole minute to come up. This might work actually better with whole minutes. You're just doing the opposite of what we did in the last assignment. <laughs> so, make sense? Dwell on it, think about it, try it out. It's really your homework assignment. I did most of the programming part of it for you. Now it's kind of like how do you want to do the logic? And how do you want that to work? Um, so let me just revisit that assignment real quick. I thought I had it up. So the view uh, should begin with a start button. The picker set the amount of time to count down. So that's how you could do it right there. Just set it to, to count down time. And then use the start button to set the clock with the desired time and the start the countdown. So you put that time into the label. And then you can just up you can do the same thing. Show show time or show timer. Just take that same functionality we did with the stopwatch and minus minus or minus equals minus equals minus equals by one. In fact, instead of plusing it, you just minus it by one second. And then when it hits zero, you can just test for zero, put a little if, if statement in there. If it's zero, then stop it. <laughs> unless you're going to go into negative time. So the problem with the countdown is you're going to go into negative time unless you stop it. But you can easily reverse the stopwatch to do, go backwards is what you're doing. And you're picking the starting time from the date picker, which is the different part. So I did practically do this, to, to do this for you outside of writing the code for you. Um, any questions on this? I did record it so you can go back and take a look at it again if you want. So. All right, so now I'm going to officially stop this recording again. <laughs> and I will, post, uh, I will post the date picker and the uh, digital clock along with the video. So when you click on the video, you'll see it underneath. I think that's easier than putting it on the bhacker.com website. And then this one will be the next one underneath it. So we'll have three videos, three videos from today. So.